Welcome, Drink with James, episode 36. You're right, I am wearing a new sweatshirt. Thank you very much. Last night we had a for you, um, well, it's last night from when I was recording this, not last night from when this is published, but go on Facebook. We had an amazing for you last night. I think we had 65 influencers here in the office. Uh, and Cameron, who is our lead developer, and myself were talking about growing your following. Obviously, something that continues to come up in every Drink with James episode. There's somebody who's asking questions about growing your following. We did a whole hour and a half on it last night. Cam focused on Google Analytics, um, SEO, SEM, things like that. I focused on Instagram. I think there is some really valuable stuff. So check it out. It's on our Facebook um, under For You. Tim will put a link up here. Um, definitely take the time to watch that. We're alone here. We're gonna have a guest. We're filming another one tomorrow. We're super excited about a guest we have coming on tomorrow. And you guys really love the Justin Bridges episode. And I appreciate, like Tim and I have gotten so many emails and I know Justin did as well. Um, and it seems like y'all want more of those kind of conversations that I'm having with influencers. So we're gonna to continue to try and build, bring in like insane talent who's smarter and more interesting and better looking than myself uh, to teach some of this stuff as well. Also exciting is next week, Tim and I are going to be down in Sea Island for the Southern Sea Conference. Um, so we're going down to South Georgia. We're doing a little Drink with James live down there. Uh, we're also probably going to film some stuff down there. So catch us over there as well. So exciting couple of weeks coming up. As always, send those questions in. Again, it was so nice to get y'all's emails um, and tweets and Facebook comments and Instagram and all that good stuff. Um, so please keep those questions coming because without it, I'm just sitting here talking about myself, which is totally fine, less relatable for you. Now for the questions. First one, something totally different. Um, love the creativity. Somebody sent in a question uh, via a YouTube video that they, uh, they, they filmed um, and asked us a question. So Tim's gonna play a bit of that. Before I get to my question, I just wanna say great sweater in your last post. Great color. I like that you switched it up. You did something a little bit different. That was nice. So on to my question. Regarding guest posting and the importance of it, I have reached out to probably 10 to 15 different bloggers, all with a similar following and a similar style to mine. Um, and I'll get the odd message back, but it's usually about, you know, like as soon as it comes down to getting together to do the post, create something, put a schedule together. I don't hear back. So I'm hoping that if you talk about that in your next video, maybe it'll inspire some people. Cheers, Amber. First of all, a few things before we even get into it. First of all, all of you should send in video questions. And if you do, you're going to want to first compliment my clothing and tell me how good I look. Then you're going to want to tell me that I'm a good photographer and Certainly you should be drinking. So Amber, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, super creative. We loved it. Tim sent it to the whole company today. He was very excited, which gets us all very excited. Um, but let's get into the meat of the question. Guest posting. So yeah, it's something we've talked about here on the show a few times and it's something that I, I do think is very valuable. But it, I do think it can be hard to get Look, it can be hard to get anyone to answer an email and do something. So if you are struggling, you know, you reach out, you say, let's do a guest post. Here's the thing. The problem is, I think there's a lot of unknowns. What is this guest post going to be? What is it going to do? How is it going to work? Do I think I'm going to get anything? What might help is if you come up with a project for a brand, maybe it's unpaid or something, but you come up with a project for a brand that involves a few influencers and then go out and find those influencers. I've seen other people do this and it works well. Uh, go to a small up-and-coming brand and say, yeah, I, I could do a post for you, but what if we did a video with three other influencers who are in Canada? I know a few of them. They're really awesome. Would you repost that? And then they say yes. So now you go to them and instead of just saying, hey, do you want to do this collaboration together? Let's try and share following. Let's try and like, you know, do something together. You say, hey, I've got this brand. They want to do something with a couple influencers. I thought you'd be really great for this. Are you in? Right? That's a lot different conversation. There's no uncertainty about what is this going to look like? What am I going to have to do? Um, are you a total weirdo, right? Like all of these things are kind of off the table because it is something for a brand. So that would be my suggestion. If, if you're not getting any feedback from just reaching out, 
try and get a brand involved and then reach out. I think you'll find you'll have a lot more success. If you're a blogger, you're building a brand every day, right? I don't talk about personal brand here much on the show because honestly, the, 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 the term personal brand is like, Maligned and a bit like, like uh, you know, eye rolly. Like, oh, you know, you're building your personal brand. Like, let me, you know, like it's just, it's annoying. It's kind of an annoying thing to say, but that's all you do every day. You build a brand, you know, and 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 it's really important to to set those brand guidelines and what you believe and what is your philosophy, so that you can know what you should say yes and you should say no to, right? Like, as you get bigger and you continue to get an influx of, of brands coming in, especially in the beginning, like right when you start to get a lot of brands reaching out, there will be some brands that reach out that don't align with your, your brand, your blog, so your brand's ideals, and you might be tempted to take it because there's money or because you want to work with the brand or because they're offering you a trip. And I, I think if you have a strong mission and a strong vision and you have a philosophy for your brand or your blog, uh, it, it becomes a lot easier to say, no to things and to know what you should say yes to. So first of all, you're building a brand every day. Second, if you get to the point where you're big enough where you can move into jewelry or clothing or a magazine or whatever it might be, I say more power to you, you know? There is, look, I used to do the photography thing, right? And I had a full-time job, marketing job. It paid well. I, I was on the path. I was doing well. And I was nervous about missing all of this work to do these photography gigs and travel around the world. And I remember I called my mom, and you know moms always know best. And I called my mom and I was like, I don't know what to do, you know, this brand, they want to send me to Dubai, but I'm really busy at work and, you know, I don't know, this, my boss is going to be upset. And she was just like, listen, this is not, your life won't always be like this. You, you're, you're having a moment, this is like, a really special and amazing moment in time and you should 100% milk it for everything it's worth and like get all the experiences and get everything you can out of it. Same goes if you're building a brand on the blog side and you have the opportunity to make overalls or jeans or t-shirts or jewelry or cell phone cases or whatever it might be, I think take it, you know? You have a point of view that is resonating with people and you don't want to oversaturate yourself but you definitely want to make sure you saturate yourself and you try and do as much as you can if that's what you want to do. If you're not passionate about t-shirts, don't make t-shirts, you know, but the, the, the blogger brand collaborations that work really well are generally like, you know, Danielle from We Wore What, she wears overalls every day, so it makes sense that she started an overalls brand, right? Like that makes sense. JC, who was on the show, she's the daughter of a cotton farmer. She did a line with cotton, like that totally makes sense. If it makes sense and you're passionate about it and you have a unique point of view, I say go for it, you know, but if you're just trying to make a little bit extra money, I found, you know, from what I know of these things, it's, it's not like they're huge money makers. There's a lot easier ways as an influencer to make money than creating product. Um, so it should be a, it should be something that you're, that you're passionate about and you really care about. So we talked about this last night, actually, Tim, Tim is a bit of an expert in this and he talked about it a little bit, but I think that Facebook and Instagram ads are massively underutilized by influencers. They're cheap, they're easy to learn how to use, they're unbelievably effective. And I think all of you should take $50 this month and you should try and run some Facebook ads. You can email Tim at 4Card, it's right here. Uh, email Tim at 4Card if you have questions. He, he knows what he's talking about and he's happy to point you in the direction of a couple blogs or, or give you some advice on what to do. But you know, last night we were talking about essentially like if somebody comes to your blog or they, they, or your YouTube or your Instagram, you can serve them Facebook ads, um, pointing them back somewhere else. Um, basically it's, it's called retargeting. So let's use your blog. Let's say they come to your blog, but they don't follow your Instagram, right? So they come to your blog, then the next time they go to Facebook, you can run an ad getting them to try and follow you on Instagram. Right? So there's things that you can do that are super effective. Cameron, um, again, I, I, I encourage you to watch the video from last night on growing your following because we talked about this for 15 or 20 minutes. But uh, Cam also said if you run Google ads, which work really well, 
as well, you should always be pushing to specific posts. So not pushing to your overall blog um, or your overall Instagram, but post, you know, push to specific posts. You're more likely to convert there. So I think spending a little bunny, a little bit of money um, certainly works. And that is, you know, if it were me and I was trying to get more attention to my blog or my YouTube channel or my Instagram, I would probably start running some ads. You know, the other thing is, is PR. Um, so PR, I don't think we've talked about much. We have a little bit about getting a publicist. Um, but how to, how to do PR, I think, similar to when we were answering Amber's question and we were talking about getting a group together, you want to do the same thing. If you want a reporter to write about you, let's take Amber, right? Amber's Canadian, um, and we all might be Canadian soon um, if things keep going the way they are. But if Amber wanted to get an article written and she went to a reporter and said, hey, I'm Amber, I have this really great blog, write an article, they would say no. If Amber got 10 Canadian, um, sorry, 10 Canadian bloggers together and said, hey, there's this whole Canadian blog thing happening and it's different than American bloggers in these five ways, will you write an article that is five ways Canadian bloggers are different than US bloggers and include me? You, they will do that, right? You have to bring the reporter the story so if you have a group of friends who are doing something interesting or you're in a group of you know, influencers that are different um, or you can, you can think of the story, what would the story be and how is it bigger than you, it can involve different brands, whatever it might be, bring that to a reporter and you basically hand them, you know, hand them a story on a plate and it's much easier for them. But until you're you know, blonde salad level, man repeller, nobody's going to write just a piece on you. You need to be part of a larger trend. So PR, marketing, these are very basic things in brands. Every brand does them, but I don't think influencers do it enough. So that would be my suggestion. That's it. We're done. Look, um, we're busy though. Again, we're shooting a really good episode tomorrow. We're super excited about Tim and I are out of town next week, uh, shooting down in Sea Island. So hopefully there's going to be a lot of sun. Um, I'll probably do it in a bathing suit just because I can. I'm not actually going to do it in a bathing suit. But um, again, keep those questions coming and we'll see you next week. Cheers.